Hi folks, uh, welcome to this week's tutorial. I'm Howard Jones. Uh, this week I thought I'd offer you this chance of uh, perhaps uh, having a go at uh, this sort of still life, which is uh, an old stone urn. Um, it's a photograph, I've worked from a photograph basically from um, a holiday snap. I haven't put the photograph up because um, I've literally just used the urn shape and um, placed it against a background of my own making, if you like. And in fact, there wasn't even any flowers in the urn. So it's a little bit of creativity that we're exercising along the way. Um, the colours are on the screen that I've used. Um, this is just a clip of um, the full demonstration. Uh, of which you can get if you pop over to my website and subscribe to uh, my monthly uh, watercolour classes. But I'm hoping you can uh, at least have a go at it from this speeded up version, which I shall um, do a little bit of voice over so that you can follow as you, as you watch. And I uh, hope you have a go at it and let me know your results. Uh, good luck with this one. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already and um, and also hit the like button. Um, these things, by doing these things, it really helps me keep these uh, short tutorials um, coming and supports my channel. So uh, good luck and see you at the next one. So you can see here that I've, um, from that photo that I mentioned, um, I'm really sort of playing around with the background, um, just just to create a slightly better, um, a, a more impact. Um, I've sketched over the, um, I've sk actually sketched over the sketch, so I'm making sure that my windows weren't as dark as they are in the, in the photo. And this is what I mean by sort of, um, really using the background as a rough guide and uh, inventing my own background, changing things, changing the tonal values. So I'm sketching out the shape, the general shape of the urn here. Always good to get a, a central vertical, um, a, like a sort of axis. Um, that way you can make sure that the shapes are equal either side of that central measurement. Um, I always try to sort of place things into anything slightly complicated to draw, difficult to draw. I tend to sort of place out in boxes, ovals, any recognizable shape that will help me um, help me to nail the um, the outline and the proportions. So it's um, I'm very careful to make sure that my drawing um, instills that feel of three dimension at, that um, that it has curvature that this this shape this urn has curvature to it and I just sketched out the edge of my shadow what will be my shadow handle included And as I said, there wasn't any, if you just look at that photo for a minute, there's there's no flower. There was some dead green things <laughs> popping out of the top. Um, so you'll see me add a bit of colour to suggest some, some sort of bedding plants, if you like, sort of annual bedding plants. Um, but um, it was really, really about the shape and... Um, and just grabbing the opportunity to be a bit creative which I'm always trying to promote in my tuition. Um, I do feel as though, um, y y you know, sometimes when we're learning things by copying, I, I do question whether how, how much of it sticks as a sort of learning. Uh, the value of the learning in that situation is questionable because if you're not following a, tu a, a tutorial, Sometimes when you're um, you're you're left to your own devices, it it seems to all sort of suddenly disappear. Um, and I, as I say, I'm always trying to encourage people to learn the uh, as much of the theory as as anything else, so that you know once you leave the class, sort of thing, you're able to do it for yourself. I think there's a saying; it goes along the lines something like you can. 
you can um, you, you can provide people with fish, or you can teach them how to catch fish. It's a, it's a, it's it's that sort of thing by where I like to teach people to be able to do it for themselves at some point. There's nothing wrong with copying um, these instructions and, and copying what you see in these demonstrations at all. Um, I used to do it myself. I still do from time to time. There's plenty of really good tuition out there. Um, and uh, we're, we're none of us so uh, so high and mighty to be able to um, think that we can't learn something new. Um, I'm always looking for that. I'm just speed drying here. Um, yeah, we learn all the time from others. And um, I think my regular classes think I'm... I'm I'm just trying to sort of butter them up a little bit when I say that I learn from my students. I, I really do sometimes, and uh, the the luxury of being a tutor is uh, you can learn um, things from people at all levels. Um, this is just um, my little bit of ultramarine blue here, and I'm just detailing some of those darker marks they're the sort of the recesses to the relief if you like it's texture to the to the to the um urn so there'd be little as i say the recesses that offer the shapes this is a very typical um design urn you know it has that sort of old greek sort of uh, faux greek um uh, 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 appearance to it uh, just outlining windows. I see this as a way of uh, um, strengthening my pencil drawing. So it's a small brush with a good point. As I say, my mix is usually ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. I think I did use, actually, it might not be on the list in the beginning, I did use a bit of um, cerulean blue here as well. And that's I think that's what I'm using right now. Um, as I say, if you want... Um, if you really want to sort of join in um, and see the full demonstration of which is still available, um, you can pop over to my website and you'll get the full um, you'll get the full details of the materials that I use, the paper, the brushes, the um, original paint color mix, uh, uh, color choices. Um, here. I'm looking at those windows and seeing that uh, in the composition, in the overall balance of things, they're very dark. Um, and I don't want those windows to be as dark in my painting. So I'm very careful here to um, lighten the tonal value of my, of my windows. So that's mostly ultramarine blue. I've just added a little bit of alizarin crimson to that. Um, with the belly of the brush, with this big mop brush that I'm putting, I'm using. I um, I just put in some abstract sort of shapes in those windows. Now those windows will look dark while the paint is wet, but um, I'm quite um, uh, I'm quite careful with that mix and how much water is in it. I know that it's going to dry out a lot lighter. So whilst those windows look quite dark now. If you were to stop this video and just um, compare the, that tonal value to that, that that you see at the end of this demonstration when things have dried out, you'll see a huge difference. The, those windows will be much paler. So I'm cutting into the background a bit there on the top right side. That allows me to outline what will be the show of flowers in a very loose fashion. So there was an initial wash of raw sienna and um, and alizarin crimson. So I'm just outlining the shape of the urn here, mostly the sort of shadowy side of the sorry the um, the tonal effects that are on the ground. Picking off there with a thirst with a tissue, 
um, those little reservoirs that build up just before they start get a chance to turn into runbacks, uh, cauliflowers, whatever you want to, whatever you refer to them. I tend to call them. I know in the old books, the old watercolor books, we used to call them cauliflowers, where the paint runs back on itself and creates sometimes a really good effect and a very useful effect. But um, you have to sort of decide where and where and when those will work in your paintings and when they don't work in your painting. So you're just looking at the, um, the, the urn itself now and what colours I choose. Um, you'll see me pick up raw sienna. Just a bit of raw sienna here. And it's applied, if you notice, I didn't mix it in my palette. I apply that raw sienna directly to the to the painting with plenty of water in the brush. So it's a sort of um, a broken application, a delivery of uh, sort of abstract shapes. Now I'm picking up something cool, the cerulean blue, and I'm just popping that wet in wet into some of the areas that will be turning away from the light. So sort of halfway through the painting process here. The original painting took about an hour uh, from start to finish. Um, that um, that was the actual painting time. The sketch took probably a further ten minutes, five five minutes probably actually. Um, it's it's that thing that these um, these things take longer when you're doing a tutorial. When I'm painting for myself and I'm not tutoring, the sketch takes a lot less because you get used to doing it more quickly without having to sort of narrate over the top of it. I'm just speed drying things here because I quite like the shapes that were in that in the urn itself. And now I'm I'm taking further stronger colours, knowing that the first marks that I made will uh, stay there, will sort of grin through the finished uh, painting, the, the finished effect, because I, because I um, chose to use the hairdryer to speed dry those first marks that I made. They will stay there. Um, as long as you don't overwork the, br the, um, overwork the brush when you're applying further um, washes. And that, that's when things get muddy. If you speed dry your initial marks that you make um, and then are careful to use a soft fibred brush, you can continue putting washes over those marks and shapes without the fear of your painting going muddy. So do be careful. Be very economical with your brush work. So just making sure I... See, I, I I see the speed drying with the hairdryer as a way of sealing. It's like sort of um, putting the brakes on and, and capturing the shapes that you've got. Um, as I've just said a moment ago, as long as you don't overwork those shapes once it is dry uh, with further washes, if you're very gentle on the surface with a soft fibred brush, you'll be fine. Otherwise, you will end up in, in the mud. So just lifting off a couple of slightly wetter areas there, creating some further texture. And um, that's something I've been doing for many a year, um, lifting. If you look at um, my earlier video, videos from a few years back, you'll see that I do use that technique of uh, lifting out texture. So I just zoomed in there so you can actually see the marks that um, that I'm actually making, purposely making. So just putting out a few extra bits of paint there. There's the small brush back into um, offering some detail. Tend to make those sort of marks, uh, as I say. The the dark dry brush marks that you can see there are um, it's 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 ultramarine blue burnt sienna with very little water 
and they're meant to represent the the really deep little recesses and 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 um, the subtle uh, little pits and dents, if you like, in in the relief, the surface of the of the stone urn. Now it's time to consider um, the background again. So I'm looking at the background. I'll soon be thinking about the the shadow on the wall behind the urn. And I'm just using a painter's knife to create a little bit of texture as though there were curtains in those windows there. So just mixing up um, what looks like a neutral at the moment um, for um, I decided against that. Yeah, sorry, that was a neutral I was going to use for the windows and then decided that I was dark enough in the windows. Um, I'm thinking about the show of flowers there on top of the urn, but I think it's really time to deal with these sh this sort of main main show of colour. So I'm just put out, I just, uh, the first colour, that first red was a cool red, it's uh, alizarin crimson, and that yellow that you can see me applying now is just a little bit of cadmium yellow. And I try not to overdo those um, applications, keeping a lot of the white paper in and around what are to be perceived as as flowers. Um, in the in this keeping this in the loose style, of course, rather than be painting lots of little shapes with individual little petals, um, which you know you, you you can choose to do if you if you so wish. Uh, we all have our different cutoff points in terms of how loose or tight we want our paintings to look by the end of the painting. I always err towards a, a looser style than a tight style, which is why you won't see me very often um, painting it individual petals on my flowers. Um, you know, they're, they're, if it was a study of the flowers themselves, then yes, I, I would probably do a loose version of uh, petal shapes. So here's that shadow mix, which is ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of burnt sienna. So I'm sort of needing to copy the shape quite carefully. I've just put the shadow through the the gap that you can see through the actual urn handle. So it goes in pretty quickly. This is a mop brush, fully loaded each time. It's quite important to load the brush fully. Um, just looking at the, the the photo there for a few ideas of where the shadow falls, given that the light is coming from the top right at sort of angle. And um, so I like that little negative shape there at the between the real urn, the real thing, and the um, shadow itself on the bottom left of the stem of the urn. So I'm just looking at areas that might be shadowed out. Just using practical because again the um, the photo um, was taken in very subdued lighting, very sort of sort of ambient lighting. There wasn't very strong sunshine, therefore there wasn't very strong um, shadows. So it's a bit of creativity, which I love doing. I've I've got no problem adding that bit of uh, uh, imagined. Um, uh, inference to the to my paintings, I always think of it as the adding the art um, rather than copy you know things slavishly. So a little bit of a green mix there from cadmium yellow, cerulean blue, and um, mixing up. T I always think of my greens 
the very minimum have two or three temperatures to them cold greens, warm greens and something in between so you'll get those from the mixing of the cadmium yellow mixing of the cerulean blue mixing of burnt sienna and um, just make sure that you, as I say your, your, your greens are both warm and cool and sometimes some neutral in the middle and um, that was more or less it. Put the mount around it just to see what I think of it. And I'm just checking my tones. I, you can see my hand there, sort of checking the three main things. Tonal values, uh, color temperatures, and shapes. So, um, I think I'm sort of okay with it. I'm just deciding to dot the I's, cross the T's as they were, a couple of these extra little dark hits will pop a few of those um, what might be sort of flower centers that type of thing, just adds a bit more dynamic to the focal point territory which is which is sort of upper right in the top right quadrant if you like is the main focal point territory little bit of white gouache spattered over here and um, really that's 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 it if you've enjoyed watching this folks and uh, if you've been brave enough to have a go at this uh, do pop some comments over um, all I'm doing there incidentally is I've just got the one inch flat brush and suggesting a little bit more so subtle shadow uh, just to give a bit of further um, depth and form to my to my flowers but uh, good luck with it. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the bell icon if you want immediate notification as and when things get uploaded. And um, and do leave your comments. I always like to hear the comments. I do get back to them when I can, usually within 24 hours. Um, not always, but I do always get back uh, and answer my comments. So till next time, have fun.